well through the magic of video, um, while we were dumping the memory card, I went ahead and continued to weave. And so I can catch up a little bit and we can get to finishing our basket. Cheryl, you know, as I've sat here and weaved a few rows, I have maybe a silly question to ask, but have you ever gotten a splinter when you're, I mean, you get these hairs, and I'm just wondering, if, can you get splinters? Don't jinx me. Don't <laughs> jinx me. I have not gotten splinters. You have to have a pretty thick piece of reed that's really sharp to get a splinter. But the only time you can really get splinters, I have found, is if you have a wooden handle that hasn't been sanded very well, and it comes in, it, it might have a little splinter. But okay. when we get to our class where we're making a basket around a handle, I'm going to show you how to sand your handle so that you don't get splinters. Okay. But that's a very good question because people are concerned about that. Yeah. The other thing I get asked about a lot is, do your hands hurt? Do they get dried out? My hands do not hurt. In fact, people who have arthritis, and I have arthritis now, because the hand doctor told me I had arthritis, and I said, how do you know? And he says, I'm a hand specialist. Uh, I dislocated a tendon in my finger here. And yeah, that was fun. Anyway, I had to see a hand specialist, and that's when he said, you have arthritis in your hands. Okay, so most of the time, I don't have any pain from the arthritis per se in my hands. Doing this wrist though because I fell and broke it, slipped on that black ice, yeah. and so right, I right so I do have some pain in the wrist sometimes. But as far as the hands, if you keep your hands active, if you have pain in your hands and you don't do anything, it just gets worse. They stiffen up. So. Anyway, so one of the things that you might be able to see here is on this basket, these really hairy things popping up here. I'm just going to trim those a little bit. Only because it's annoying. We're going to cover it all up, but it's just kind of annoying. And by no means am I a perfectionist. All right, Cheryl, if I like the way this looks now, do, as you said, we can be as creative as we want. I don't have to have a mirror image, right? And I've got four and my five and, or well, do you know, I need to go up one more? That depends on when you, whether you want it to be symmetrical or not. So, it's okay. So you can end it now if you'd like. Sorry, my daughter-in-law was just calling me and texting me about watching my granddaughter tomorrow. So sorry for that slight interruption. So yeah, you can make it. You can stop now. I like that. You can stop now. Okay. Where this is your last row. Yes. Right here. So let's give that a little dip. Okay. Remember, it's thicker. So when you overlap, it's going to butt up against itself. And let me show you on this again, this piece. So when you make it a little easier to show you the start and the stop. So when I say the way carpet installers, like carpeting, linoleum or whatever, they actually overlap it like this, okay? And then you cut through both pieces and when you discard those little scraps, then you have this join right here that's at an angle. Okay. Okay. Don't cut it off so that it's straight, straight. It just lays better if it's like that. Okay. No, okay? You remind me of that when we get to the end there. No, I, I've already told you. I don't care. Okay. I can't remind you again. Oh, you're going to remind me again. I'm just so getting bossy. Old. I'm getting old. I have leadership you're skills. You're bossy. Okay. okay. So, Trying to break, Cheryl says to me, do you realize you have your sunglasses on your head? <laughs> so, for tonight's entertainment, <laughs> I wear my sunglasses. <laughs> the reason why I did is because my hair, I didn't bring a tie back and, you know, you just do what you got to do. So, I'm sorry if 
The sunglasses My are sunglasses convenient. Are... I just happened to notice. You got your sunglasses on there your head. You last long... night that you say that, I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking, that feels weird. I was laying in my pillow with my sunglasses on my head about 11.30 last night. So I just, they get on there and I get about them and, yeah, welcome to my world. Okay, so last row, and again, checking for the bad side. It goes on the inside and if you want to see more details, close up, refer back. Mm -hmm. and making it nice and tight in the corner so that it's a little more square without creasing it. Don't want to crease it. You can square these rounded baskets up later after you finish, but don't ever try to square that by crimping the edges, creasing them, because it just doesn't work. All right, so... Okay, now I am going to ask for some advisement here. So I'm at my end. I'm going to so I like move that. Actually, if you pull this out, okay, and you know that's going to be the inside one, and just lay it over there and cut it on the outside on right here. Yeah, and then and you angle can it, angle it like this, as yes. such. Yes, through both. Yes. Snip. Why is it that nifty? It's just a nice little tip to get it in really tight. Now I'm going to... So like this. Now that's overlapped a little too far, so snip it back so snip further. snip it just a little bit? Yeah, and you can just snip that, that one back to match it. A little bit more, I think. I think that's still overlapping. Yeah. You don't have to be as nitpicky as I am, but... I like things yeah, a little see, that nicer just, and neater. I just so uh, perfect. I'm also going to use another a little shortcut that I did not show in the other video in the uh, the segment. Thank you. The segment on the rims, but I'm now just laying the seagrass on the outside, and I'm going to take my outside rim. And I'm going to work these in at the same time because when you are more of a, not really a production weaver, because I don't consider myself a production weaver. To me, that means that uh, I'm making it all day long and I have a huge market to sell them to. Well, I mainly make my best baskets for gifts. I do sell them on line, ready-made ones, on my website, Pajama Joe Studio, and it's down for maintenance right now. That's where you'll be able to eventually go and buy the kits, the supplies for your baskets. And I am ready to cut and tuck, correct? Yes, ma'am. So what's the first thing you're going to do? I wet, I went ahead and sprayed my reed at the top. Correct. And I looked to see, this is where it's going to be, this one overlaps it and will go down in there, but mm -hmm. I'm just going every other one right now, tell me if I'm incorrect. Well, I would cut the insides off first and get them out of the way, because oh. they're in your way right now. Yeah, they are. Now, you need to have it turned in this direction. Okay. So that you have the leverage to so uh, hold on to it like this sense. and cut. If you try, if you're left-handed, of course, you would turn it this way and cut with your left hand. Gotcha. And it's a good time to mention that if you are left-handed, you should try weaving like a right-hander would because I've taught many, many left-handed people and very few struggle. There are some who prefer to weave the other way around and you just do the exact same thing only in the opposite direction. You would go clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Okay, does that make sense? It made sense to me. <laughs> so now I have my rims on and I'm going to lash my rim on. Alright, let's just say for for example, sake, okay. 
I'm over here talking and I'm not really paying close attention oh, and I, I cut the wrong spoke. What am I done do? or? Man, I'm telling you, you're starting over. <laughs> you're going to okay. say you know what, that's a good question, and it's something I don't think we covered before. But if you accidentally cut the wrong one, oh, please, 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 make sure you catch it in time. Because if you do that all the way around, you are sunk. You really are. Because you won't have any way to tuck the spokes. Because when you tuck these spokes over that outside row... That's what's holding the entire basket together. So if you cut off these outside ones, the inside ones have nowhere to go except to the outside. And because the nasty, ugly, hairy side is on the inside, if you bend it over this way, then you're going to have the outside of it showing and you would have to tuck it the opposite way. So just, I'm going to say, don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. So you do kind yeah. of have to pay some attention. Well, you, you, know? have, you have to pay close attention to yes. yourself, especially if you don't have a teacher sitting there watching you yes. and to be able to stop you. So I'm going to say you really need to pay attention to what you're doing now. So that's where my overlap is. I'm going to go to the other side to start my lashing. And I had a very detailed close up of how to do this. So I'm putting this in here. Just put my tool up here. Open that up. Stick it right through there. And then, and then I broke that. So. Guess what? I didn't leave this in the water long enough because that should not have broken. But I should have had it in the water a couple of minutes ago. So you may want to you may want to put your reed in the water a couple of minutes before you actually need it. So it was very poor planning on my part that I didn't have that ready. So I'm gonna. I'm going to coil your piece up and put it back in the water as well. All right, so just, I'm going to cut that so that it tucks into that area right there. Right, that okay. first one that you see on the inside of the basket, that's the one you're tucking okay. into. Because that would make it just too short. Right, if I did it in, there's really just no room. Where are you talking this about? This one right here. I'm going to tuck it into that no. first color. No, you're going to tuck it into that first that white first piece. That first one, okay. Yes. All That's right. your easy place to tuck, and if you go on down, if you have color up higher, and you try to tuck into that narrow row, you're more than likely to, it'll stick out. Okay. Yeah, so that's why you just want to tuck it in, and you can see that this piece, I'm going to move this, just make it, I'm going to make it wonky. Wonky. Yeah, so when you tucked it, when I tucked it in there, you can see where it ends up. Now, what Edie was just referring to was go down on down to this one, and that's where I say I don't like to go that far because it's a shorter amount of space that you're going to tuck it into, and it can just really look kind of nasty. All right, I think that this is wet enough. Try this again. And just like a lot of things, you may have to try it again. And work that up. Ah, uh, yeah, that's much better. And so then I'm using my tool to go in there and tuck that over. Oh, sorry, my nose itches. And like I told Edie, you know what? We're not professional videographers. If no. we want to hire somebody to run this camera for the classes, and if I didn't scratch my nose when I needed to, and this and that, you know, hey, we're just people just like you. 
We like to have fun. And I hope you're having fun as you're making your basket. So I'm going to wrap this around a couple of times to make sure that it was long enough but not too long. Just cut just a little bit off. So this is where I kind of put this in up against myself. Not really in my lap. But in the video of this part of the class, I also show using the Lash Buddy. Yeah, I'm excited about trying that. Yeah, so I'm going to just do it the regular, the regular old way that we did before we had the Lash Buddies. And I don't have very many Lash Buddies because they are not inexpensive. They are around seven or eight dollars to buy. And I typically don't have students that only come here for occasional classes like my 4-H classes. Those kids only make one basket a year. And I'm telling you the baskets that they make are just they awesome. They are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Our fair just ended and I had some beautiful ones that went to our state fair. Blue ribbons. Oh, by the way, we're in West Lafayette, Indiana. I think I said briefly something about us Purdue. working at Purdue. But a lot of people don't know what who Purdue is. No. I mean, you know, it's just like there are certain universities that you, you hear about and some of you don't. So depending on what part of the country you live in, you might know about Purdue, you might not. But hail, hail to old oh, Purdue! Purdue. <laughs> my boys, one of my boys is still in, and junior year, one has graduated and has an amazing engineering job, so proud mama moment. They worked, he worked hard for them to create, yeah, so, and, and you know, it's so rare for a, a former student that is from this area yes. and went to college here. To be able to get such a great job locally. Yes, he and his wife and obviously both sets of parents were really hoping that the kids could stay local. And we were so blessed when we found out that he got hired here in, here in town. And truly living the dream for a young for a young man and his, and his wife. His bride. And his bride. We're all excited. A lot of life changes here in my family the last year. And so now I'm starting kind of, I said that my youngest is still at home, um, but I'm starting the empty nest deal. Yeah. And so, you know, part of reaching out and doing some new things is I got a lot more time than I ever did before. It's kind of, kind of cool, actually. Really enjoying it. And, you know, I hear a lot of parents, since I work at Purdue, and I have the opportunity to talk to a lot of students and parents. And when their last student ends up in college, a lot of people suffer from that empty nest syndrome because things are so quiet and everything. Yeah. But you know what? The, those commercials on TV about turning the kids' room into a sewing room or craft room. Amen. That's what I'm doing. Today. <laughs> <laughs> They're true. Yeah. And it's you know, like, I thought I'd struggle. I really did. Cheryl knows me. I'm gonna, I cry at everything. I'm a, you know, one of them. And cry at graduation, cry at the wedding, cry, cry, cry. But I'm really kind of enjoying. I told you. What's going on in my life now? I told you, you'll be glad when they believe. I've been a single mom, and so now it's kind of like uh, all that hard work, and I can kind of relax and do what Edie likes to do. That's right. And, you know, I just thought of something. It's also almost time for the memory to be dumped. So I'm going to dump the memory. I'm almost finished lashing my room on. I'm almost cutting, done cutting and tucking. So I'm going to dump the memory.